So in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through how to model uh, UV and then texture a cereal box in Maya uh, 2015 and in Photoshop. So a lot of the tools I'm going to use anyway will work exactly the same in the older versions of Maya. And all the tools I'm using in Photoshop will work exactly the same. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new cube. Uh, so there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can do it using the shell out of there here uh, at the top of Maya's interface. Um, and the cube option is here. Or the way that I normally do it is you can go create polygon primitives and then cube. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to click and drag um, the base of our cube out. And then we're going to click and drag them for height. So basically what we're looking for is something that looks similar proportions to kind of like a regular uh, cereal box. Okay. Um, so that's okay. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the UVs for this file. Um, which is like the texture layout. So there's a couple of ways that we can do that. We can click on this icon over here, uh, which is takes us to the UV texture editor. Or the other way we can do it is go to Window and then UV texture editor from the menu. Okay, I would usually use this way, um, just because normally I don't really use the shelves that often. So Window, UV texture editor, and then we should get something that looks a bit like this. Okay, um, so what this is is when we made our um, this is essentially like a map for the texture to go on to the 3D object. So when we made our cube, Maya started laying out its own set of UVs. Uh, so if I click on this face here, you can see it's highlighted kind of in this almost orange color over here. So that is, if we painted a texture there, that is where it would appear in the image. Okay, same with the back, appears there, the sides, okay, the top and the bottom. Okay, um, so, the uh, if you look at these shapes in the UV texture, they're not exactly the same as object in Maya as it is at the minute. Okay, and that's a bit uh, that's a bit awkward. So if we were to paint a texture on this section at the minute, it would come out kind of fairly stretched. So we want to remap these so it fits our kind of updated version of our cube. Okay, so the way we do this is we're going to go into object mode, click on the object once. Um, for this next bit, you'll just need to make sure that you mode that you're working on your menus are set to polygon okay so if you just click up here just make sure it says polygons uh, and then we're going to go to a menu called create uvs so in later tutorials i'll go through maybe um, some more customized uv mapping so we'll do planar and then cylindrical uh, but for this one what we're going to use is a thing called automatic mapping okay um, and what this does is whenever we hit it our screen updates here on the left hand side so maya starts looking at your objects um, from various different angles and starts projecting textures on it. So it's looked from this angle and it's decided that there's a better way to project the texture onto this face. Um, so if I just quickly hold on my right click, I'm going to go back into object mode. You can see now this is updated far better and this looks a lot more like that cereal box. Okay, so if I click on this front face, we can see this is where the front of the box is going to be. Um, that back face is going to be sitting right beside it and these shapes now resemble our model a lot better okay so we could actually take this out this file out at the minute if we wanted um, but we're just going to make a couple of changes there okay so we're going to try and lay this out a little bit better um, so what we're going to do is hold on a right click we're going to go into edge mode i'm just going to have a look at some of these edges here so if i right click um, i'll just click and drag in a box on this side here you can see that is that side there okay so this is our the front of our box this face here and this here is the side of it so you can see when i click and drag and i select that edge it shows up in two places okay um so what we can do in, uh, in maya is we can actually move these together um, using the move and sew okay so if i um click on that edge and then i choose this little option up here i'll just zoom in so you can see it a bit better you see what Maya does now, it moves that over, um, so it's sitting right beside it, okay? Um, now we can do the same with the other side, okay? So if I click on that edge now, you can see that uh, Maya is showing me that the next piece beside that, this edge that it has in common, is between these two sections, so all I'm going to do is hit move and sew again, okay? Um, now I'm just going to flick on this slightly different tool just to show you how it works. Is the you have a tool up here? It's the second one in. It's the uh, Move UV Shell tool. So at any stage, I can click 
on these chunks of texture and I can move them around okay so I'm just going to click on this one I'm going to use W on my keyboard I'm just going to move it out to one side just so you can see kind of what's going on a bit better uh, so we're going to hold down a right click go back into edge mode again we're going to click on this edge and now you can see that these are the edges that it has in common okay uh, so we're going to move and sew those and then we're going to do the same with this last edge okay um, Actually, the last edge will be fine just to leave there because that'll loop back around. Okay, so we're only going to have one crease. So I'm going to do it with the uh, tops and bottoms as well. So if I click on the top edge of this, um, you can see that the bit that corresponds with it is sitting over here. So again, moving so, uh, and then I'm going to do the same then with the bottom. Okay, so what we've got now is one big chunk. Um, one big UV shell. So if I use this option again, the move UV, we can just shift it into place. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to scale it down slightly. Now when I scale it, I'm going to just use that middle square because it'll scale in all directions equal equally. <coughs> okay, so that's our object laid out. So kind of like you would dismantle an actual cereal box. Um, it's actually unfolded. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to output this file into Photoshop so you can actually start working on it. And the way we do that is if you make sure you're in object mode for this next bit. So hold down your right click, go into object mode. Um, if you want, you can just click off your object, click back on just so you know you're working in the right mode. Um, our UVs now you can see appear white. Okay, that's where in object mode. So what we're going to do is just go to the top of the UV texture editor menu, go to polygons, and we want to take something that's called a UV snapshot. Okay. So from this here, we get uh, presented a series of kind of options. Um, so the first thing to look at is your file name. Okay. So if you're working on a project like I am, I have a project set up for um, the Psycho House I'm working on at the minute. It'll automatically save it into your images folder. Okay, if you don't have a project set up, it's really worthwhile just double checking where you're going to output this file to. Um, the next box that we concern ourselves with is the size for the X and the Y coordinates. So we're going to do 1024 pixels uh, by 1024 pixels. Okay, uh, and then underneath that, we just choose what image format we want. So I normally work with uh, PNGs, so I'm just going to choose PNG um, from this option. Okay, so I'm just going to click browse a second because what this will let me do is it will let me uh, name the file. So I'm just going to name it serial underscore UV so then I know what type of file it is. Um, and then we just hit save. Now it's still waiting for me to just hit OK. OK, so you let, we can just go back, double check your stuff. Make sure you know where you're saving it. It's going to be 1024 by 1024. And change your image format to PNG. You could use TIFFs as well for this if you want. But generally I just work with PNGs. Uh, and then we're just going to hit OK. Now, if it works fine, you'll notice down here in my um, script editor down the bottom, it's told me it's saved the file and it's given me the exact location. OK. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to save this uh, Maya file because all that information, all those little UV layouts that we just did, are all attached to the model. OK. So I'm going to just go File, uh, Save Scene As. I'm going to save it as Serial. Okay, and then now that's going to remember all of our texture layout that we did. So it's very important that you do that. Um, normally every year I teach quite a few students who make a model and they save it and then they do all their UV layouts and they forget to save it after they do that and then they have to go back and redo it all again. Um, so what we're going to do now is just nip into Photoshop uh, and we're going to open that file uh, that we just had. Okay, so... Um, <coughs> the one that we just outputted, so I know that I put it on the D drive and the Mari and the Psycho. Sorry, in the Maya, then in the Psycho. And then it went into the images folder. Okay, and there's our serial UV now. So I click on that and then just hit open. Now what you get at the when it first comes out is you get one layer, uh, which is set to layer zero. And that's where your UVs are. So the first thing I normally do is if I make a new layer, okay, 
Um, I'm just going to fill this layer full of black. So I go edit fill. When the content box comes up, I just choose black. And then all we do is click and drag that layer underneath. Okay, so now you can see our UVs a bit better. If you can't see them, you can normally zoom in to get a better view. So layer zero is literally just that little UV layout that we had in Maya um, just a couple minutes ago. And I normally just make, by default, make a black layer underneath. So I'm just going to rename that UVs just so we know what it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just a quick little test um, just to see if everything's worked okay. Um, so I'm actually just going to make a new layer. And I'm going to paint some quick numbers on it. Okay, and this is just my way of checking if my textures have gone on properly or if it's if my UV has been laid out properly. So all I'm going to do is um, I've just made a new layer. I've just quickly painted some numbers on here. A lot of people use a checkerboard uh, texture just to see if it's not stretching and stuff. But I generally just use quick numbers. And then we just go file, save as. Um, I'm going to save this as a different file because this is going to be my kind of texture file. So you call it texture or you could call it diffuse. Um, I'll save it as PNG. And what I'm going to do now is show you how to attach that to the object in Maya. Okay, so we're finished with our UV texture editor for the time being. We can close that. Um, so what we want to do is assign a new material to this object. Okay, so make sure we're in object mode. Okay, so just hold down your right click, hover over the word object mode. Um, just make sure you're in that object mode. Now, what we want to do is hold down a right click. We're going to go to assign new material. And this is where we choose kind of our, our material type. Okay, so I'm going to choose a fong for this one because um, I think it, it's going to have a little bit of gloss on it. Um, so it's, the texture is kind of going to have a little bit of a plastic effect. Um, so choose that. Now, instead of using the default colors here in the fong shader, what we want to do is we want to plug another color into it. So the way that you do that is you move over to the right hand side, just this little checkerboard, you click on that. Sometimes it can take a while to load up, depending on your system. And this is basically Maya's way of asking us, uh, what do you want to plug in to the color attributes? So for the way the color of this object appears, what do you want to use instead? Uh, and I'm going to say that I want to use a file. Okay, so you can notice fourth one down here, we've got the word file. We're just going to click on that. And now what you'll get is a little box that appears, which kind of looks fairly familiar, just the Windows and Mac operating systems. It's just got a little folder icon. And that's where we just click and now we find our file. Okay. Um, so I know that I saved mine in here. It's in DRive Matty, Maya Psycho, and then it's in the images. All I'm gonna do is click on that. You'll get a preview for your object. Just hold head open. Okay. Now straight away you can kind of see we've got a little sample of the image here, um, but it's not appearing on the model, and that's just our viewing mode at the minute. So in the minute I'm in flat shaded, uh, and the shortcut for that is five on the keyboard. If I push four, that'll take me into wireframe. And if I push six, that'll take me into uh, textured mode. Okay. So what I'm doing there is I can quickly see that everything's laid out the way I want it to be. Uh, the one looks the right way around. The two looks the right way, right way around. Very hard for me to say. The four is correct. Uh, the five is correct. The three is okay. And the six is okay. Okay. So now what we'll do is we're just going to start uh, texturing our object in Photoshop. So we can leave my open, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to pop back into our uh, Photoshop file. Okay. So first of all, now I'm just going to make a, a new layer. I'm going to follow this kind of with a generic color um, that I want my cereal box to be. Okay, so I'm just going to, going to use maybe an off-white. Okay, so I'm going to add it, fill contents uh, beside the use box I'm just going to choose color and then it's going to quickly find a rough color for it okay so that'll be fine yeah so I'm just going to slide this down the color palette just so I can still see my uh, the layers palette just so I can still see where my faces are okay um, so the next thing we want to do is try and figure out what do we want, uh, what's required on a regular cereal box, okay? So 
if we look at, um, I'm just quickly using Google Image search here just to show you kind of some examples. So if we look at how a regular cereal box is laid out, uh, you generally have a logo and some kind of character on the front. The sides then are used for um, nutritional information. Okay. And then you generally have a back. Sometimes the back would be different, like it would have on this example, it has more information. Sometimes it's the same on the back. Okay, so that's the kind of thing that we want to replicate. Obviously, if this was going to go into a game, we would want to, want to replicate that to a fairly realistic level uh, because we want the player to believe that this is an actual real environment and th these are real products inside it. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of a slightly kind of uh, take the piss cover. I'll do it for um, like a thing called like Lucha Loops. Um, so for the next bit of tutorial, um, I might just speed it up a little bit. I'll slow it down if I'm doing anything in particular. Um, but basically, all I'm doing is just basic kind of Photoshop manipulation. Uh, the way we want to lay it out is front on here. Uh, we want the top on here, so kind of make it look like there's some flaps to open it up. And then we'll use the sides for nutritional information. Okay, so now I'm back in um, Maya. I just worked on the Photoshop file for a little bit just to give a quick example um, of how we're going to apply it. Um, so this texture has actually already been applied. Um, when I just saved it in Photoshop, I just overwrote the previous version, which is the PNG. Um, okay, so just to show you me doing it, it's the file, save as, and then I just made sure that I used exactly the same file name. Okay, um, so this is the final version of the texture that's going to go on the object. Um, now just a um, word of advice whenever you're saving it they apply it. I just turned off my UV layer because I don't want those to come through. Um, now all we need to do now is go back into Maya. Uh, here's our object. It's actually already been applied. Um, if you have your attribute editor turned on, which is a little folder up the top right hand corner, if you right click you'll see down the bottom is the name of your shader. And then all you have to do is double click on that and that'll bring in your uh, updated texture file okay um, so there it is there's a quick example now I can still kind of keep making changes to this uh, there's the side um, back okay and the top so there's where I put in kind of a real rough uh, flap okay so that's just real quickly how you go about UV in and then how you quickly make it like a texture to put on and then bring in okay uh, so I hope you enjoyed it um, if there's anything you'd like to see obviously comment um, send me a message uh, and subscribe. Okay, thanks.